This is Math 141, Section 4.1. We're going to talk about exponential functions. So exponential functions are functions that change basically by multiplication. As x increases by 1, the output, in this case, doubles or multiplies by something. Um, if I had, you know, if I wanted f of 3 here, I'm saying 2 to the third power, that's 8. You could think of it as 2 times 2 times 2. Or if I said... Um, f of 7, 2 to the 7th. On my calculator, I can use that caret button right here, right above division, to do an exponent. 2 to the 7th power is 128. And so on. How about, um, I could have things like f to the 1.5. Now this idea of like multiplying it by itself one and a half times, it's a little strange. So it's time to start to kind of let go of that idea that it's just repeated multiplication. About 2.8284, blah, 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 so on and so forth. So instead of equal to, I would say about 2.8 and then going on and on and on. How about f of 0? That's 2 to the 0th power. Now, um, without knowing, a lot of people would say that that should be 0. But it actually is not. It is, it is actually a 1. And so with exponential functions, anything to the 0th power is equal to 1. Except zero, um, that's undefined. A, zero to the zeroth power is undefined. Uh, how about if I had, uh, I'm sorry, different function, g of x is equal to 16 to the x. <laughs> what would g of 1 half be? Let's see, 16 to the 1 half power. Well, if you remember your exponent rules, 1 half power is the same as square rooting. So it's a four. Um, or I could say 16 to the 1 fourth power. That would be the same as the fourth root, which is actually two. And I can do that on my calculator. I can say 16 to the power of, and then I'll just make sure it's in parentheses, one divided by four, one fourth. Spits out my answer. All right, so we can evaluate these pretty easy, especially if we have a calculator. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of graphing with these. So I've already graphed uh, 2 to the x. Looks like that. Notice it goes through the point 0, 1. And it's increasing. Every time x goes over by 1, this height doubles. Let me show you what I mean by that. So notice that when x is 1, y is 2, right? Like that height is 2. But if I go over just, just one spot to where x is 2, that height has doubled. And if I go over one more spot, that height from last time has doubled, and so on. So in this case, with the, when the base is 2, it's doubling each time. So how about if the base is 3? <laughs> the base is 3. And as you would guess, it still goes through 0, 1. Anything to the 0th power except 0 is 1. But now as it goes over 1, it triples each time. So this is 3. The next one would be 9, etc. So here's what uh, y equals 2x looks like. Here's what y equals 3x looks like. I just kind of made this, you know, this is five long. So um, I actually compressed it a little bit. So there's my y equals two to the x, there's my y equals three to the x. And notice as this gets better, if I go five to the x, it still goes to that point zero, zero, but it raises more quickly. So I could also have things like a 2.5 to the x. And as you would probably guess, it should fall right between those two values. Or I could have uh, 1.5 to the x. 
notice it's less steep. And as I as I keep reducing that, whoa, that got less than one, and it goes and it starts to go down. So if I make this just like a 1.2, like that, like that, and then when I hit my anything less than one gets flipped it it kind of gets uh, re um, reflected across the y-axis so if I say one half to the X if I turn these other graphs you can see that one half to the X and two to the X are reflections of each other the way that this grows is the way that this decays we call this exponential growth, we call this exponential decay. And notice that's the same as two to the power of negative x. These two are the same. And we know that because we know some, uh, I guess we'll call it uh, rules. A negative exponent flips the fraction, right? Turns it into division instead of multiplication. And one more thing about all these graphs. I can shift this up by adding 3 to it, right? Or I could shift it to the left by adding 3 inside here. And I, you can say I added it because there's my point, negative 3, 1. Right, it's been shifted left 3 points. So let's talk about um, compounding interest. Let's talk about basically uh, loaning and investing money. And this is this and gambling were two pretty nice uh, starts to mathematics. A lot of research uh, done, a lot of a lot of drive to do it uh, fairly early on. So let's talk about simple interest: one thousand dollars at fifteen uh, per percent per year. So if I have a thousand dollars and I get 15% per year. It's gonna sit there for a year and do nothing except make money. And if you get an investment at 15% a year, um, man, throw a bunch of money at that. That's a great, great rate. So let me grab my calculator. Uh, one of the things that we can do is we can just take 15% of it. And, and that's just multiplying by 15. So 1,000, uh, not plus, but times 0.15. $150. So in that year, that 15% that interest got $150. And now if I think about the total worth of it, the total worth is the $1,000 since it's still there and the 150. So it would be $1,150 after one year. Now notice I got from here to here by multiplying by 0.15 and then I added it back on. So I could have gone straight from here to here by multiplying by 1.15. Basically, this is 115% of that. So instead of doing it in two steps, multiply by 0.15 and then add it back on, I'm just going to multiply by 1.15. So that's the first year. So the second year, if I want to know how much it's worth, uh, I would multiply by that 1.15 again because I'm getting 15% on the $1,000 and on the $150 that, that came into it. So I'll go times 1.15. Whoops. Um, let me get the right amount in here. Now I'll go times 1.15. And now notice I just didn't make an extra $150. I got it, but I got $22.50 more because of that, because uh, I got interest on the interest. So that's uh, $13.22.50. And the third year, I would do the same. And the fourth year, I would do the same. So notice to get to the fifth year, I will have multiplied by 1.15. One, two, three, whoops, from zero. So one, two, three, four, five. So basically, I have $1,000 that I started at, and I multiply by 1.15 five times. So I could write that out five times. 
1.1, or how about just take it to the fifth power? So after five years, this would be worth Uh, $2,011.30, let's round that up, six cents. Just like that. So I have this, this simple interest, um, and we'll see why this is called simple in just a minute, which is basically the principal, the amount that I started with, times one plus the rate, 15%, written as a decimal, to the power of time, how many years it sits there, how many times it's compounded. All right, that is amazing and wonderful, but that is not how uh, interest really works. Because if it was, what would happen is your money would have to sit there for a full year before it before it got anything, and then it just raises up in like in like one chunk, right? It sits at a thousand, then a year's up. Then it goes up by that extra amount. Then a year's up, then it goes up by some more. So what we can do, and not us, but I guess bankers. So we have this to the power of, of time. So if instead of compound instead of compounding this at the end of the year, we could compound this um, what's called semi-annually. So we'll compound it here's the year halfway through the year and then again at the end of the year now if we do that you shouldn't get 15 percent at the halfway mark at each time because if we do that you're basically like your money's growing faster than it should so here's what they do they take the rate and they cut it in half but then they give it to you two times in the year so instead of giving 15 percent for the whole year you get 7.5 percent here and then you get 7.5% at the end of the year again. Now it feels like at the end of the day, that should just balance out, right? So let's let it sit there for 10 years. Let's see what happens. So grab that calculator. We have that 1,000 and uh, one plus 15%. And if it just sits there for 10 years, and we get it once in the 10 years at 15%, it's worth that. But if we go the other way, and by that, I mean, we give us half the rate, but we get it twice as much. So notice we're getting half the rate, but we're getting it twice as much. So this is compounding 20 times, but half the rate is compounding 20 times. And look at that, that's like $200 more just by doing that. So this idea of uh, compound interest gets better than just simple interest. Oh, and we could do it more, right? Let's do it monthly. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, whoops. So if we do this monthly, we're getting a twelfth of the rate 12 times. So our equation would look like this with the, the 12s here, right? Because we get a twelfth of the rate, but 12 times a year. The rate is substantially smaller divided by 12, but it is also happens 12 times more, 120 compoundings. Let's take a look at that. Um, So there it is right here. I have it entered in with the 12s. Quite a bit more. So notice what happens to this simple compounding. The rate gets divided by the number of compoundings and the time gets multiplied by the number of compoundings. So essentially it becomes this. And so, and this is the amount at time t. So now this is our formula for interest that's compounding. So let's let's take a look at see. Let's say I had a uh, five thousand dollars, and it's invested at uh, three point seven percent, pretty decent return these days, um, and it's going to sit there for I'll say fifteen years. 
Now I want to I want to uh, compute different values for different compounding amounts. So I'm going to have my semi-annual. That's two times a year. I'm going to have my quarterly. That's four times a year. And I'm going to have my monthly, which would be 12 times a year. So every, most of the setup is the same. My principal is $5,000. I get that 5,000, 100%. Plus, now this written as a decimal is 0 0.037. So 0 0.037 but I'm only going to get half of that rate, but I'm going to get it two times a year for 15 years. Notice that setup. Uh, this setup almost exactly the same. I have this principal rate. But it happens four times a year, so I get a fourth of the rate, but I get a four times a year for 15 years. And then lastly, I get a twelfth of the rate, but 12 times a year for 15 years. All right, let's see what this does for us on the uh, on the calculator. All right, we had $5,000. There's our rate, and then that's going to get divided by, in the first case, just by 2. And it's taken to the power of, and um, make sure that you put this part in parentheses if you're going to not just multiply it out, if you're going to enter your calculator this way. Because we want to take it to the whole power of 2 times 15, not just the power of 2. All right, so if that amount gets compounded semi-annually, that would be its value after 15 years. Our next thing was quarterly. So the only thing that changed was we only get a fourth of the rate, but we get it more often. Bit more money. And how about if we do it for, for the 12? So we only get a twelfth of the rate. I'm going to insert the two. But we get it 12 times a year for 15 years. Get even a bit more money. So that is that formula for using compound uh, interest for compound growth. And again, the, the rate's always the same in the problem, the time's the same in the problem, but sometimes you'll be asked to do it for different uh, compoundings, number of compoundings. So give that practice a go from the assignment and uh, message me if you have any questions or post stuff in the forums.